constraints on and off later if we want. Once we've created our constraint, we add it to the recognizer. And then finally, uh, we have to compile the constraint. Very important, because if you don't compile it, it's like it's not really getting absorbed by the recognizer. Then, to actually uh, do the recognition, the default way of working is usually with the UI. So we simply call recognizer.recognize with UI async. So it sh you should await that call to make sure that the user has a chance to respond. And then you're going to get your results back. Your results are going to come in the form of a speech recognition result. And from there, you can extract various things like the confidence, whether it was success, uh, and the actual text that was recognized. OK. So let's do a quick demo of the base recognition. This first demo is actually going to be quite simple. Uh, this one comes straight from MSDN. It's actually a demo that's called Speech Recognition and Text-to-Speech Quick Start. So let me just run it uh, directly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an actual physical device here to do this. So let me just make sure that I can connect with this. So you, th you said that this is an MSDN? Sample? Yeah, this is an, a sample that's in MSDN. OK, so if you want to find this sample, you just go to msdn.com. And on the very top, there's a link for samples. And there are hundreds of samples. You choose what language you're interested in, type in a search term, something like speech or whatever, and you're going to find lots of samples. And a lot of them are available in multiple languages. So you can download whichever one you want. And you can also just browse the code online. So if you just want to go look up, how did they do that? You just need to look at that one line. You don't even need to download it. Just go look at the code online. Yeah, we actually have a lot of speech samples on MSDN. It's quite cool. So if you just go to MSDN samples, you can just type speech. And it's going to return a ton of results, some from Microsoft, some from the community. And then uh, you can then filter out this way if you want Windows Phone 8 or Windows Phone 8.1. Be careful, OK? Because speech recognition was introduced with Windows Phone 8, which means you can find a lot of Windows Phone Silverlight samples out there. So if you see any kind of sample that has namespaces for the recognizer that starts with system.something, yeah, you're in a .NET Silverlight sample. You, you want those uh, that are part of Windows.media. Those are the namespaces for the recognizer. So these are the ones that you want. This one here is called the Speech Recognition and Text-to-Speech Quick Start. And um, it's linked also from the documentation. I'll show you an easy way to find the documentation after this as well. Actually, you know what? While I'm here, let me, let me do that right now. So one quick way. One quick way of getting access is simply go to uh, Bing.com. If you, if you go to Bing.com slash dev, like this, you're going to end up with the Bing Dev Center. And the Bing Dev Center has all these cool things like maps, app linking, search, but there's also a speech section. What you can do is click on speech, and then right here you have, let me zoom in, you have the documentation for speech on Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1. So on Windows 8.1, um, I would recommend that you only look at the speech synthesis namespace. The Bing speech recognition control is something that can be used today to do speech recognition. But come with Windows 10, you will have the same namespace as Windows Phone 8.1 from WinRT. So you should definitely focus more on Windows Phone 8.1 if you want to do speech recognition today on Windows Store. Well, uh, with a Windows Store app. Um, Windows Phone 8.1, you see you have links to speech for one-time API, voice commands, speech recognition namespace, and speech synthesis namespace. So it's a great way to quickly find the documentation for speech because we have so many features in our SDKs that, yeah, it can be a little hard sometimes to find the right docs. OK, so now what I have here is uh, my phone. And this is the, the, the default sample. So for example, I can use the predefined dictation grammar. So this one is going to use the open dictation. I can say whatever I want. And then when I click on it, it launches the sample. And then this one is going to use with UI. So for example, I'm going to go with, this is a test of the speech recognition that we are using during this recording. Would you say this is a test of the speech recognition that we are using during this week? So I, I spoke a little too long there. I should I should have been, been a little faster because it, it cut off the recording and it went with week instead. So um, I could go another one here. Yes. Welcome to this course on development with speech. Heard you say welcome to this course on development. Oh, with so you speech. see now we have this course instead of this course again. It, it, probably the French Canadian accent here because I said this <laughs> like this. Sure, that, that's a French thing, you know. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I'll blame myself and not Cortana. Um, so that's the recognition with UI. And there's also the web search as well. And we're going to look at a few more in here. But let me just show you the code behind this. It's pretty much uh, the same code that we looked at on, uh, whoop, there you go. So uh, in this one here, my solution. So I have this speech recognition and TTS quick start. So you'll see there's a mult, all the different samples are here. So this one that we were using here is the uh, predefined dictation grammar page. So the, ba the main page itself doesn't have um, much, everything, all the, the, the magic happens in the button here. So we can take a look here. So what do, what do we have here? So speech recognition and TTS quick start. We have the uh, recognize with dictation grammar click. So everything happens here. So we first start, we create a speech recognizer from the speech recogn windows.media.speech recognition. Okay, so again, if you find a sample that refers to uh, system dot, I think, phone or dot Microsoft or Microsoft dot something, these are Windows Phone Serverlite APIs. What you want are the ones in Windows dot media. And those are the WinRT samples uh, and WinRT APIs. So we create a speech recognizer. Then immediately we're compiling the constraint here because we're not actually changing the constraint. We're using the default constraint, which is the uh, open dictation that's used by default. So we just compile it directly. And then we have this text block here that we're just um, making collapse. And then finally here, we start the recognition. So we call it Windows Media Speech Recognition, Speech Recognition Result that we're going to get back. And we call uh, await speech recognizer dot recognize with UI async. Then uh, we can go check, we get the results, the speech recognition result right here, which is a speech recognition result object. We can, first of all, you need to go check the status of your recognition. Did it work? Was it, was it effective? Because maybe the user canceled it. Maybe you didn't catch anything. So you can check to make sure that it was successful. So you can check against speech recognition result status, success. Once you know you have a successful speech recognition, then, um, what you can do is go extract the text out of it. So here we're going to speech recognition result dot text. This is going to be the actual string representation of what the user said, whatever was recognized. And that's it. You've got the recognition right there. This here is simply to check for the privacy statement. And this simply covers all other errors. So that's a fairly straightforward way of uh, doing speech recognition. As you can see, with very little code, basically create a speech recognizer, compile a constraint, call the recognizer, check for results, uh, and then check for success, and then check for the result. So what, five lines of code it took? So what, three, four lines of code to do to make the phone talk? Five lines of code to recognize what the user said? I mean, these are really easy APIs to work with. a whole with. lot of code to make sure that it's a really good experience end to end. <laughs> well, yes, of course, it's always said that the code may be simple, but once you turn it into a real world code, then there's exception handling, and there's going to be a great UI and an experience. So it goes beyond that. So that's the base of speech recognition and how to work with it. Next, we're going to start looking at how can we increase the quality of the recognition by using uh, custom grammars and programmatic list grammars or constraints. So the first one is programmatic list grammars. Programmatic list grammars, also known as phrase lists, uh, basically allow you to kind of create like a preset list of things that the user can say. It's very similar to what Jeremy showed earlier in the VCD module, when, in module three, when you basically had the option of either using a web search, but you could also provide a phrase list directly in your VCD. Now you have the, this option of creating a phrase list inside of the app. So that phrase list can be created either with static constants, it could be part of your resource files, uh, <coughs> so in fact, if you're doing international apps, they should be inside of resource files, or of course, they could be coming from a service in a cloud. So it's very lightweight, and the cool thing with this is that it works offline. So it's going to be an array of strings, and your array of strings is going to represent anything that the user can say. The thing, though, is there's no such thing as optional words in there. So if you want to be able to recognize, for example, um, uh, search the web, 
or find on the web. And if a user just says search web, well, chances are it might think like, you know what, it's close enough, so I'll probably allow it. But you might have to put one, which is search the web. Another entry would be search web. So there's no such thing as putting optional keywords. So you create a speech recognition list um, of constraint objects, and then <coughs> you pass an array of string to it. And then after that, you add that object to the constraint collection of the recognizer. And the recognition is successful when the speech recognizer matches something. So whenever it goes into recognition mode, if it can actually match one thing that the user said to something that's on that list or close enough, then it will give you a successful recognition. So this is an example of a programmatic list right here where <coughs> we're saying, let's say that you're asking the user a very simple question. You want to know if yes or no, they want to do something. So there could be uh, you started a process, and then you need to ask the user, do you, want to, uh, do you want to do this, yes or no? Or it could be like when earlier, when you sent me a text message, and then it said you received the text, you can say read it or ignore. There was just only two options there. So even if I had the worst accent in the world, <laughs> probably get or there was a lot of noise around me, it just needs to, to capture, read it, and ignore. And again, this is up to you as a developer. Don't use words that are too similar. Like, uh, for example, uh, read it and don't read it. That, that's not a good idea. You should really go for, for examples in a phrase list that don't sound at all alike. So here in this case, for example, we could look at just yes or no. But you never know. Maybe the user is going to go yes, no, yeah, yep, yippers, nope, no way, are you kidding me? Uh, stuff like that, you know? So kind of like the different ways that someone might say yes or no. This is all in English, of course. Throw in your own language in there. So once we've got all of our responses in a string array like this, then uh, looking at the code here, <coughs> we can see that we are now uh, passing that list of responses to the speech recognition list constraint. We give it a name. We simply call it uh, yes or no. Let me actually highlight this here. Whoop. No, I did not want to do this. Okay. How do I zoom in without? Control one and then just wheel back. Oh, okay. No, I wanted to be able to highlight, so let me do the same thing. Uh, I messed up everything now. Okay. Um, anyway, so right here we have the list constraint. We say that on a speech recognition list constraint, we uh, pass in the responses. We give it a name of yes or no, because we'll be able to add multiple constraints if we want, and then we can turn them on and off and then call them by name. This is kind of like the identifier for it. Um, we can provide some examples. So that pop-up that's going to show up, that UI pop-up, you can show some examples to the user just to kind of give them some guidance on what are you expecting here. Well, we're expecting yes or no. So it's pretty simple. Then once we, we've created our constraint, we can then add it to the list of constraints on the recognizer and then compile the constraints asynchronously here. So good idea to await it. Real quick, control two if you want to draw without zooming. Oh, thank you. All right, so that's basically what I was looking for. <laughs> so, see, Jeremy is such a veteran of MVAs, so that's why I decided to team I'll, up with I'll him. I'll tell you what, I know how to use a search engine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll give you that one. Yeah, this is my first MVA after all, so. But not my first presentation. You're good. So, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so now it's time to start the recognition. So looking back at our code here, um, we have start recognition right here where we simply say we're going to get a speech recognition result and we simply call await recognize with UI async. There's also a, a recognize async therefore without UI and this way uh, it's going to put the pop-up, it's going to wait it and then the user knows oh that's my that's my cue I have to say something here. Then after that you can check for the result or you can be a little more uh, daring like this piece of code right here and go straight and grab the text and show it, but it's a good idea to check for the success first. Now, seeing if you have success is one thing, but it's also very important to make sure that you, that you know how, how good is the recognition, basically how confident is the recognizer that it got it right. Because there's a lot of complicated algorithms that are running, it is all based on probabilities, and the outcome of those probabilities is it will go and say, well, you know what, I'm very sure that I got it right, or I think I got it right, or you know what, probabilities are pretty low. Instead of having you deal with probabilities, you can go check something 
on the speech recognition result, you can go look at the recognition confidence. The confidence is going to give you four levels, high, medium, low, or rejected. Personally, uh, if I see low, I try to ignore it. I'll usually treat low the same as rejected. There's other ways of dealing with it though. If you see low, you can then maybe um, qualify it back to the user and ask for clarification or something like that or just start over. If I see medium, I'll usually have a tendency to accept the recognition, but I'll try to give a hint to the user that, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll take it, but chances are it, it's possible that I might have gotten it right. So for example, if you look here at the slide, if you, if you get high, I would say, you said, what is the weather in Newark tomorrow? But then if you got a medium confidence, I would say, I think you said, what is the weather in Newark, in Newark tomorrow? So it's a, it's a very subtle change in the personality of your app just to say like, hey, you know what? I'm trying to work with you here. I think you said that, but if I got it wrong, you know, the, don't blame me, you know? Maybe speak louder, speak clearer, or maybe with less noise or something, but I'm trying to work with you here. So let's look at another demo for this one. So for this next demo, we're going to use a, a programmatic list. So let's stop. Whoop. We're going to stop this first. We're going to look at programmatic lists. So this one is in a loop. It's actually quite a simple demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the outcome, uh, first of all. So do I have my project, my screen app 